Hey, 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 welcome to the Attic Manadad here with Broby One Kenobi, my real life brother. Say hi, Broby. What's up, bro, bro? It is late on Wednesday. We're going to try to get this out, get out the limited strategies preview for Dominaria United. That's right, we're going back to Dominaria. It's quite exciting. And let's see what's in store here. Going I hope you're back, seeing the back, next slide here, Broby. Yeah. Yeah, Yo, okay. We're cooking. We got release dates we're going to cover. We're going to cover what's in the pre-release packs versus what's in the draft boosters. Um, the set is set up with monocolor super types, so each of the individual colors kind of has a like theme to it. And then in the archetypes are mix and match, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about the mana bases, which are very complicated since you're supposed to be able to play anything from a monocolor deck to a five-color deck and anything in between, with the modal deck being two-color plus splash, is what they say. We'll talk about whether that seems realistic or not with the designs. Um, we've got the official archetypes, which is like the two color archetypes. We've got some hidden archetypes I think I've discovered. Talk about removal by color, some combat tricks by color, top commons, uh, predicted of course, because neither of us have played the format yet. Did you get a chance to look at any of the pre-release like uh, early access no, stuff? I'm... Nope. Broby's very, it's very frustrating because Broby can just come in cold to a set and like hit mythic. Um, but you know, that's why I want to get his opinion on okay. stuff. <laughs> <These previews. laughs> <Not anymore. laughs> um, we'll talk about traps and constructed plants and then the expected money drafts. So, uh, arena MTGO releases September 1st paper pre-release is actually right after this time. Uh, with Nuka Penna, they tried it before last time. So I don't know if they're just experimenting, switching it back and forth. Official worldwide paper, September 9th. There's a game day event, September 17th through 25th. You can check your local game store calendar. And I thought I'd put up here, Arena Open is going to have sealed slash draft on October 1st through 2nd. So if you're a spike and you want to try to win thousands of dollars through an Arena Open, uh, definitely good to know this format and be ready on October 1st, so in about a month. What is in the box? It's pretty standard. Uh, every uh, one of these pre-release boxes is the same. It's going to have um, six boosters, a foil stamped rare or mythic, uh, the arena code card, uh, spin down die, etc. Um, the draft boosters also very standard for a magic set. They're getting away from these crazy <laughs> different weird ones. 15 cards, combination uh, uh, rare or rare mythic in one slot, three uncommons, ten commons, one land. There will be a legendary creature in every booster, and a traditional foil of any rarity can replace a common in 33% of the boosters. So, the monocolor archetypes for the set, white is go wide slash tokens, blue is like a spell slinger, and black is like graveyard sacrifice, pretty standard. Red is aggro, and they say direct damage, but I think we'll talk about doesn't seem like direct damage is like super supported for limited and green is ramp slash domain so pretty kind of standard super types for the individual colors so like you know if you're going to combine blue and red let's say then it's like aggro spell slinger right green so if you know nothing else just look at this slide and that will give you a sense of like what the two color archetypes are Oh, and I made another slide that kind of explains all that, right? So, blue, black, control. We'll just talk about it when we get to there. It's standard. That's all standard stuff. It's all standard like, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, here's, here's, so here's what's cool, okay? So, they've got domain, which uh, we were out of the game when they played this, but it's, it's like cards that get powered up based on the number of basic land types that you have in play. And so, at common, mm -hmm. they have these tap dual lands that have basic land types. So, there's... There's actually 10 of them, but I just, them, yeah. I, I threw in, um, there's a rare land, this Thran portal, which comes into play tapped, unless you control two or fewer other lands, and you can choose okay. a basic land type, so that can help you, like, complete whatever domain type you're missing mm -hmm. with that. So that's, those are, like, your lands for domain. And then at rare, they have, um, six of the pain lands getting reprinted. You remember these from back in Ice Age? Adakarway, Sulphur Springs? Yeah. Are that good though because they do a damage to 
they're not that good you think well right they're, they're really good uh, well they're better for aggro this is like this is they don't come in tap they're like, yeah they're, they don't come in tapped and they deal taking the damage in aggro is less of a big deal and you got it rare you got this plaza of heroes which is actually going to be a super collectible card it looks like and um crystal grotto at common which is like a filter land so it's terrible don't draft it but that is a possibility um colorless fixing there is some at common with your salvage mana worker which is actually i think probably one of the better versions of this thing you know they usually do like the prismite two one filters your mana this is actually a one three for two so it's like a decent body to block and it can filter the mana once and then at mm -hmm. uncommon i like that relic of legends which is a uh, three mana mana rock tap to add any mana of any color but then it turns all your legends and there are a lot of legends in this set into mana rocks themselves which could be cool you see they printed a mythic timeless lotus Uh, I have to have timeless. A I don't. I'm not sure. That I remember that card. Yeah. No, it's new. Got to have a, well, a got to have a lotus if you're going to Dominaria. So the uh, five mana enters the battlefield. Tap legendary artifact. Taps for Wooberg. Sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Use no, it for commander it. combos, but yeah, I, it's not. It's... That lotus is sad. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably actually uses nothing, for it in limited. There's nothing timeless about that lotus. That's just disgracing time. Um, as usual with these sets, there's going to be most of your fixing in that's, green. That's the that's the inflation of time right there. <laughs> in that <lotus. laughs> so that's a stagflation in lotuses. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, I mean, I can't believe it enters tap. I feel like you get, I know it's, it it's, it's brutal. <laughs> that five mana, sure. Like you just tap you out, five turn five. Here. It's rare. I mean, it's, come on now. Um, then we do have Pixie Illusionist in blue which is a 1-1 one, one flyer for one, but if you can kick it with green, you can get, uh, oh, well, you get counters on it, and then it taps to change a land to the basic land type of your choice. So that'll be cool with Domain. And then Sprouting Goblin, if you can kick with green, you can search your library for a land card with the basic land type and put it into your hand. Okay, the two color oh, archetypes. Good. Hmm? But it's a, it's a three mana card that kicks in for an extra two, so it's five. Yeah, so there's a ton of kicker in this set. So it's a three, yeah, it's a two mana a, card. You kick it for an extra green. Below. So for three mana, you get it, it's like a two two that draws you a land of your choice, which is not a bad. Thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. And you can tap sacrifice but, a land to draw a card. If you kick it in it. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm trying to follow on the other slides here so I can actually read the cards since I don't know what's going on. Um. Okay, the two color archetypes here. Um, so every two color pair has four kicker cards. So one common in the one color with the kicker of the other color, and one common in the other color with the kicker of the reverse color, and then uncommon and an uncommon. You kind of see how I paired them up there. And then every two color archetype also has two um legends at uncommon and one is going to have like a double pip and one is not mm -hmm. and then one there's going to be at least one rare for the pair but usually the rare is not like a signpost not telling you what that color is all about so let's just use this as an example blue white right there, Gavin Verhey did a video on the archetypes, and he called this flying tempo. So all the, the labels you see on these slides now are going to have the Gavin Verhey sort of summary of what he called the archetypes, which is different than those combiner versions, which is also kind of like a wizard's official way of describing the archetypes. But I think these names are actually more accurate to what you're going to play in Limited. So I think this is a flying tempo deck. I think it's really good. First of all, I'll just say that right off the top. Um, you got Stall for Time, which is an instant that taps two creatures and draws a card. And if you kick it, the creatures are like frozen down. There's this thing called Stun Counters, where you put a counter on them and they don't untap 
you remove the stun counter instead of untapping them. So it's kind of like that mechanic. They've always had the freeze mechanic, but they did it with a, this new counter called a, common? a stun yeah. counter. Um, that's yeah. really good. Talarian Geyser is awesome here. This is, a, again, another three mana draw a card, return a creature to its owner's hand. So nice. This is sorcery speed, I guess. So that's a little bit rough. But if you can kick it with white, you can also gain three life with it. Yeah. That's how we cast it at four for a common. Um, so that's pretty good, yeah, uh, good if you're in these colors. Runic Shot, um, destroy target tapped creature. It is a sorcery. And if you kick it, you get to scry two. You'll play it. Um, you may not like it, but you'll play it probably. Um, because blue has spells matter, the like low casting cost, like one casting cost spells can be pretty good in the, the blue based archetypes. And then protect the negotiators, which is a two mana instant with a kicker of a white. If you kick it, you get a one, one white soldier token and you counter a spell and unless the controller pays one for each creature you control. And because white is go wide, it's going to be best when paired with white too. Um, Wrath. So blue, white, what is it telling you with Wrath? When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control if you do draw a card. So it's saying have lots of creatures and cast instants and sorceries. And then he has this kind of overrun effect. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance for five mana. And he's a one, three for two, which is decent stats. Um, the other signpost, which is a little bit harder to cast because of the blue, blue and the white. But hopefully by the time you get to five mana, you can do it. It's a 3-3 flyer, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get a 1-1 white soldier creature token. So you can imagine dropping that, and then the next turn just unleashing a bunch of these cheap um, instants and sorceries and getting a huge board and taking advantage of that. And then Sten is a build around, which you can come into play. You choose a charred type other than creature or land. And spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. So you could use it to make your instants or sorceries cheaper. And then you can exile and return it, which means you can switch up you know, based on what your hand has more of. But not a high pick, I don't think, Sten. No, I don't think so. Cool card. Um, so what do I think you're going to do with this deck? Um, I, think, I think the flyer thing is right, basically. I think you want these like cheap flyers, like Pixie Illusionist, even if you can't kick it. It's just a 1-1 one, one flyer, and it actually will help you kick other stuff because you can tap it in the late game, so it's not necessarily a dead draw. If you want to splash some off-color kicking. I think you're going to have to fight for Pixie Illusionist uh, in these drafts. you got a 2-1. So one... how... Go ahead. So how this works in the sky is all you need is, like, you're usually in a race, right? And you, and you just, like, have to thwart, like, one big threat on the ground or, like, remove one or two sky blockers and so this the sky tempo decks are always good like if that's they what, can get it if they can get an advantage up in the air and then just slow you down a little bit they've already won the game that's what i'm thinking just get some air. of these cheaper ones if you, if you don't match them in the air then you're like kind of done it looks like they got chump blockers and all this tempo stuff and i think yeah. that's probably just speculating when you said the deck was strong i'm like oh yeah well those are strong commons and geyser and all for time like that's exactly what those decks want to do and they like buy you more time and life and cards and stuff so they and then if they throw synergy in with some of the like spells matter stuff for some yeah, reason in blue yeah. white it becomes good i don't think sten looks good no no this is the thing it, I mean, this is an all like, like commons and uncommons deck i think i think a lot of yeah. these um a lot of the yeah, like, the signpost legendaries are really going to be kind of like where you want to be at with these decks in general. Yeah, but it's still like a two-two body. You could fit an aggro deck, <laughs> like if you're trying to like pack a deck into like stall for times or geysers and stuff. You have like eight or nine sorceries and like just packed with creatures the rest of the way. So I don't know. Yeah, so like check out this guy haunting figment. Right, it's a two-one vigilance. They're giving blue vigilance now. And it can't be blocked as long as you cast an instant or sorcery. So you can imagine if your deck has a lot of like those instants that are like tempo, like bounce a thing, draw a card. Probably a deck more for that. Like you just like, like you're you're, you're bouncing their stuff and you're getting in for two every turn and you're flying in the air and getting chipping in. 
And then right. you can have like first striker on the ground, like Night of Dawn's Light. Um, I thought combat research might fit in. It's kind of like a curiosity effect. Or it's a deal damage draw card. Um, you can pop that on a flyer. You got some good protection with shore up and take up the shield. So you can like protect your creatures. And of course those are also instants. So those are going to trigger any of those payoffs that you get for spell slinging. And then negate also counter stuff where they try to remove your creatures. What do you think of this instant join forces here on the lower right? Three mana. So it's a three mana combat trick, which is a bit expensive, but untap up to two target creatures. They each get plus two plus two. No, like nobody's gonna drop that. So if you want to figure out if it's good or not, you'll have plenty of chances. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if you got two small flyers in the air, like you throw that on. Pop, them pop, 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 that's a plus you, four, plus you, four. That could be three. a finisher right there. Like that could be uh, your last. It's not, it's not great. I mean, <laughs> that could be your last not, eight damage. It doesn't. It feels on a low power level for an uncommon. I think all right, all right. you're not into it. Well, I know you like heroic charge, which is just I the mean, classic four mana creatures you could control get plus two plus one, and then if you can kick it with red, they also get trample. It's pretty cool. So that's just like an upgrade, a strictly it's better, better, it's better inspired charge. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's not for this deck because you're not playing red, blue, but, black. Uh, I'll go, go ahead. Well. There's probably probably some go wide in red then too, huh? Yeah, because white, white is the go wide. There's just a lot of token yeah. creation. You'll see. Uh, I picked more of that I mean, stuff. The Force, forces creatures. probably has a pl place in these token decks. Like it's gonna like all of a sudden sneak up and like counter. It might be best on, in defense. Like pop two creatures up out of. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. On the flyer deck, like you're not expecting for those flyers to defend. Like they've already attacked and stuff. You know, you're getting your free crack back. Um, you know, if you thought you were in a race, then all of a sudden you're like, puny flowers become better defenders, but... Yeah. I don't know. Okay, blue-black, classic control. Um, you got removal with tribute to Urborg, which for two mana is a minus two, minus two, but then if you can kick it, it's going to give a minus one, minus one for each instant or sorcery in your graveyard. And um, similarly, Rona's Vortex is like another kind of premium removal. So for one blue, it's uh, return a creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. But if you can kick it for an additional three, it's going to put the permanent on the bottom of the owner's library. So it's just like pretty, pretty hard removal. Like they can't even get it back from their graveyard kind of. Yeah, removal. so for four, it's uh, put on the bottom of the... Library. Yeah, it's for four, it's just like get get something out of your way. Um, so yeah, I think you're gonna play a lot of a lot of removal, a lot of counter spells, and then come in with a big finisher kind of deck. The one two Vohar Vidalian Desecrator, a Phyrexian Merfolk Wizard. I can't believe they squeeze that on there. Um, lets you loot, and if you discard an instant or sorcery, you can kind of ping people. You can do a little drain, and you can sacrifice it to cast an instant or sorcery, so you can get back your kill spells or your. Uh, yeah, oh, it's activated only as a sorcery. You can't use it to get back your counter spell, unfortunately. And you got Rona Shieldred's Faithful, which is a three-four. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, each opponent loses one life. You like these kind of decks where you just kind of like gradually ping people down to dust. Can you loop? That desecrator, then, so you can just like kind of loop it with a return a creature to your hand. Yeah, card. yeah. There's a couple. There's actually a bunch there, of stuff there, that brings is creatures there, back. Is, some, is there some double ones that are like double where you get desecrator and something else, or like? No? Uh, I think there might be one that does two. Well, I'm trying to figure out if that's a good, really good card. If that's a really good ability or not. Yeah, like that's that true. Really... Like if you're trying to grind people down. Well, um, if it's a back end loop, then it becomes strong. It exiles the card, right? Uh, yeah, it does. So, so, it's not so you like, can't it's loop not, it in, indefinitely. Like, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's like they, they, they thought about that. They powered it down, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then the rare here that might put you in the deck is Ertai Resurrected, which is actually a kind of classic control type card. It's like that um, real mystic or whatever, the merfolk that comes in and counters a spell. The 3-2 flash 
counters a spell, activated ability or triggered ability, and then the controller gets to draw a card, or you can destroy yeah. a creature or planeswalker, controller draws a card. But, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to save it for when it's going to be better than whatever they're going to draw. I just don't like it. <laughs> um... So yeah, I'm just thinking like you get these one ones that can get death touch, like the Battlefly Swarm. Um, there's a lot of walls in this format. There's actually a Defender's deck, which we'll talk about later in the hidden decks and archetypes section. Um, there's <coughs> this Founding of the Third Path, which lets you ca uh, copy stuff from your graveyard. The main thing is like. There's some cool... There's a bunch of counter spells. There's, um... Jin of the Fountain, I think, is, like, one of your finishers in this deck. is a 4-4 four, four flyer, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus one, plus one, or you get to kind of blink it. So it can kind of protect itself as long as you can keep enough instants or source... Well, really, enough instants in your hand. They can never get rid of it. This deck's, like, big-time win con because it's, like, is it just trying to ping you out and just, like make you have won the control game and then it's just like free to, free uh, yeah to i think in. it's right it's just wall the ground or the air with your uh -huh. walls and and have tons of removal and then just grind you out of cards basically classic control so it doesn't it doesn't look strong but you never know it looks like it could be fun always the cool thing i think you can do there's see this card micromancer which is a mm -hmm. three three wizard for four which kind of sounds like it stinks but you can search your library for an instant or sorcery with mana value one. And I think this is the deck for it, right? Because you got Rona's Vortex, which we talked about, which is that one mana blue. When, you know, fail case, it bounces a creature, which can be pretty good. And, and if you get it up to four mana, then you can get rid of something. And also premium black removal here, this cut down, which we'll talk about in the removal section. But essentially, for one mana, you can kill about 70% of the creatures in the whole format with this card. Instant yeah. speed, destroy target creature with total power and toughness, five or less. So it just absolutely annihilates most of the format for one mana instant speed. And uh, you, probably won't see, you probably yeah, won't see You probably see a lot of those passed. Yeah, that's a good card. But if you get a couple of those in the Micromancer, you can like guarantee to draw them too, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, red, black, reckless aggro. This is another one that's probably like your style. You've got um, a discard spell that you can kick to deal three damage to face for an additional red. You've got enthrall to the pit, which is the steel and sack thing that you love to do. It is seven mana. So I don't know, like, I don't think it's actually good, but... No, of course not. Um, there are other sacrifice effects, so you might still be willing to pay four mana to steal your opponent's creature and then use one of your other sacrifice effects in the deck. And then when you get to seven mana, you're, you'll do it. Um, you got Balduvian Atrocity, which is a two, three. Oh, but it's this, it's in the, it's all in the same card though. It's all in the same card. Yeah. You gain control of the creature, you get to attack with it. And then at the end, if the spell was killed, sacrifices the creature it. sacrifices. Yeah. That's so much mana though. Yeah, so like some people say in a kicker format, you should it's be playing. Like, it feels like that's like a better like ramp, ramp deck card. You should be playing eighteen lands, which will be something to think about at the end. We could chat about that, but mm, I feel like, like that's a card for like green, red, black, or something. That's like a three color. There's a lot of ways favorite. to ramp and a lot of ways to splash. So you could definitely splash it in other colors. Anyway, yeah, if you have green or blue ramp kind of base things yeah anyway Balduvian atrocity phyrexian berserker uh if it's kicked you return a creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains haste and then sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step so that's just the kind of like small creature get value from them sacrificing or et being kind of card uh, which is fairly fairly powerful and uh, War, Host, Ho War Hosts Frenzy. Too tired to talk tonight. Um, this is like another like mass creature, overrun creatures you control, get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. And if you kick whenever a creature you control dies this turn, draw a card. So I like that one a lot. Um, 
Lagomos Hand of Hatred is a 1-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, it makes a 2-1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste that sacrifices at the beginning of the end step. And then it has an ability that if you... If some reason five or more creatures died in a turn, you get to tap it, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and shuffle. You probably won't use that in limited. But if you do, let me know. It's probably You have, probably had a pretty awesome game. Thanks, Wayne. Garner the Blood Fist of Keld. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking. Uh, or otherwise, it's going to deal a damage to each opponent. So that's going to be another one that's kind of like going to sit out and get you the value and then the rare in this these colors is a 3-3 menace for three taps to add mana in combination of colors to cast dragon spells and you can also cast dragon spells from your graveyard so it's like a dragon's build around that's, a war war. that's not really what the deck is doing on the on the limited level in general but you know i but guess it's not if, even a dragon yeah, if you if you there are a couple dragons in the set. If you happen to get that guy and some dragons, you can probably I feel like that card's trying to become a dragon. Like the Machina Warlock is maybe like the precursor to becoming a dragon. Revise of the Claw. Look at him. I think yeah. Well, he's just like he's like a dragon rider, dragon controller guy, dragon summoner. He's like kind of like a dragon, but like a monster. Yeah, it's those old Bayashinos, the, like, lizard creatures. Oh. Um, Phoenix Chick is a 1-1 flying haste, but it can't block. I've met some chicks from Phoenix before. Whenever you, atta <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you can pay red-red if you do return Phoenix Chick from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking with a plus-one, plus-one counter on it, so... You know, another thing where you're just like throwing your bodies in, you can get back this guy. And it's decent sack fodder, I think, at a certain point once it's out, lived its value. Similarly, Cult Conscript is a 2 1. Enters tapped, but you can um, bring it back if a non skeleton creature died under your control. So that's one you can kind of loop a bunch. You got the Splatter Goblin, which is a 2 1. When it dies, it gives a creature a minus 1, minus 1. Um, you got this Toxic Abomination, which is interesting. It's a 3-2 two for 2, but when it enters, you lose 2 life. Which I think in Limited is going to be pretty bad. But maybe in this deck, you don't care as much about the life loss. And there's this Enlist mechanic, which you see over on the card on the right, Balduvian Berserker. And as a creature attacks, you can tap a non-attacking creature you control without summoning sickness. When you do, add its power to this creature's until end of turn. So you can imagine, like, a 3-2 two for 2 is pretty good at pumping up enlist stuff, since it kind of has bad toughness, but good power. <coughs> and um, people are calling enlist, like, you know, a fixed version of banding. Or as I call it, badding. Because it's, like, not as good as banding. Well, of course, nobody can remember what banding does, so... Remember we used to have that uh, white weenie banding deck. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Where, what card are you looking at? Which one? The Balduvian Berserker. It's a three mana one uh, three within yeah. list, and when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So you can imagine, right? If you can tap some big creature, and then just send that guy in, whether they block it or not, you know, whether they kill it or not, they're taking a bit, bunch of damage to the yeah. base. Mm. Yeah, so you, you put your 4-4s four or your 6-6, six, six, like it's a good red-green card. Um, so and there's like a 2-2 two, two, whenever a creature you control dies, scry 1, which I actually think will probably just get you incremental value. The Phyrexian Vivisector is like a good 2-drop for this deck. You got your combat tricks, like Furious Bellow, which is plus 3, plus 0, and First Strike, and scry 1 for 2 mana. Battle Rage Blessing, which is Death Touch and Indestructible for 2 mana, which is going to just wreck so many people. Gonna make blocking so hard against black decks. Yeah. Um, Twin Inferno, which can copy instants or sorceries, but this is the main reason I put it on here is because you can give a creature double strike. So it's another thing of just like sending in a huge amount of creatures, and whichever one gets through, you double strike it and get your last damage. You've also got access to the best removal, of course, in black red. So you've got this the reprinted lightning strike, which is three damage to any target. Call, I gotta take one. All right. 
and uh, Bone Splinters and the Dragon Whelp. And we'll pause. Hey. Alright, Roby will be back when he can. But we gotta get this out. This set is releasing. Let's move on. To Red Green Domain Stompy. And uh, a combination of. Well, it's Gruel. It's Smash Your Face. We're gonna try to ramp and also maybe do domain things of like casting kicker from other colors or splashing cards from other colors and making big creatures. It's a little bit unfocused, I think, but um, who knows? Maybe it'll come together better than I think. Uh, in the kicker slots, we have a 1-1 one, one that with haste that can kick to get, plus, get two plus one plus one counters, and it also can pump. The Via Chino Branch Rider. We got Colossal Growth, which is a pump spell, plus three, plus three, two mana instant. And if you kick it, instead it gets plus four, plus four, and trample and haste. So quite a bit of bonus there for that extra mana. We got Sprouting Goblin at Uncommon, which we talked about a little bit in the fixing section. It's a two-two that when you kick it, you get to search your library for a land card, and put it into your hand, and it can also turn your lands into cards in the late game, which is. Uh, Probably going to actually be pretty useful. I also like this Yavimaya Iconoclast really just in this deck. It's a 3 2 for 2, which is good, and it's trample. So maybe you can play it just in any deck that has green, but uh, if you can kick it for 1 red, so for 3 mana, it can become a 4 3 haste trample, which is pretty sweet. We got Rulik Mons, uh, Mons Goblin Raiders, the different Pashalik Mons, right? Is the original Mons. Is a 3 3 menace, and whenever it attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you can put it onto the battlefield tapped. So it's a ramping goblin for four mana. And if you didn't put a card onto the battlefield this way, you get a 1 1 red goblin creature token, which is nice. Start swarming the board. And there is Rada is back here, Coalition Warlord. Whenever Rada Coalition Warlord becomes tapped, another target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. So that's a domain kind of payoff. Um, unfortunately, Rada cannot pump herself. This makes it a bit tricky to attack in unless you kind of got like some backup with your colossal growth or things. And then for the build around, this is just all artifact build around. It's a 3-3. Three, three and non-token artifacts can tap to add green. So you can use it to ramp, I guess, if you want to like build red-green artifact ramp. And tap two untapped non-token artifacts to exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn, which is kind of cool. But very artifact build around. And there aren't a lot of good artifacts at common and uncommon in this set. I think it's really more of a setup for Brothers War, which is the next set that's coming, which is artifact-based. So what do I think this deck is going to want? I think you're going to want some reach creatures that'll just gum up the board like this one three snare spinner which is a reprint or the magnigoth sentry which is a four four reach for four which is pretty solid body and four toughness as we'll see in the removal space is pretty strong um you got the neshoba brawler which people will probably be fighting over this is one of the better domain payoffs it's a star three trample where the power is equal to the number of basic lands among lands you control. I'm almost always going to be a 2-3 trample for 2. So the fail case is pretty good. And then if you do end up splashing some of these um, dual lands that have basic land types, you can really pump that up um, and get like, you know, a 4-3 trample for 2 or even a 5-3 trample for 2 mana. You got Maria's Outrider, which is a 5-mana 4-4 four, four reach. And what do you get for that extra mana over the Magna Goth Sentry? You get a domain where it, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent um, takes damage equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control. So again, 4-4, four, four, 2 to the face, fail case, pretty good. And it does have sneaky reach, so maybe some people will attack into it when they really shouldn't. Although by now, you should know archers in Magic often have reach. Elfheim Worm is a 5-4 Vigilance Trample. It's just a really solid creature for 5 mana. Um, it's another good common, I think, that just when you need when you need that 5 mana slot filled, you throw in an Elfheim Worm and it'll do some good work. And because this is a domain deck, you're going to be splashing. So I would look at cards like Bortuk Bone Rattle, 
which is a six mana four four and uh, when you cast it you can choose a creature card in your graveyard and return that card to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to the number of basic lands among lands you control otherwise put it into your hand so it's either an expensive uh, grave troll or it can actually bring it right back not grave troll grave digger um jaya's fire nato this is one of the the decks that's probably going to be able to cast jaya's fire nato more easily it's just your classic red five mana deal five damage to a creature spell that has cool art and you get to scry one um you've also got fires of victory so you can kind of like splash some of these uh, herloom battle him some of these off color kickers you might actually be able to ramp and hit the um, off color splashes to get the get the value out of some of those kicker cards and or you can just use bite down for your removal which is a classic uh, reprint here target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control and then uh, this deck is also poised to take there's a whole cycle of these um, spells cost x less where x is whatever in the colors in the case of red it's a five five for eight mana but it costs x less to cast where x is the greatest power among creatures you control and it does have trample so that's a pretty good one and you're probably going to have pretty high power creatures in this deck so you're going to be able to cast some cheaper molten monstrosities there's probably you know it's a common you can probably you'll probably see some people that kind of build around that and just try to beat you down with cheap molten monstrosities and then uh, Mossbeard ancient is the you know, giant green creature that's going to gain you a bunch of life. In this case, you got to get up to seven mana, but if you do, you get a seven, seven trample. The biggest car creature in the set, um, I think even including rares and mythics. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain five life. Question is, can it survive against all the aggro decks? Here's another one of the aggro decks, white green domain tokens. And you got uh, two, two that can kick and become a three, three. Not that exciting, but not that bad either. Scour the Wilderness is uh, search your library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tap, but if you can kick it for another two mana, you get <clears throat> two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens, which is nice. Shalai's Acolyte is a 3-4 flyer with a kicker of two, and um, if you kicked it, it enters as a 5-6, which is a pretty serious threat. Um, Strength of the Coalition uh, it's a pump spell with kicker target creature gets plus two plus two and then if you kick it put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control so that can be pretty uh pretty good if you've got just a huge wide board the um signpost legendaries here queen alanal is going to tell you kind of to do that thing which is um power and toughness each equal to the number of creatures you control so just go wide, go wide, go wide, and if one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token are created instead. So make tokens, go wide, go wide, is what she says, and um, I think she's pretty good. Zar Ojanin, Scion of Ephrata, is a cat warrior that's 4-4 uh, four, four for 5 mana, and it has a domain ability. When it becomes tapped, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each creature you control with toughness less than the number of basic land types among lands you control. So, um, yeah, you could look for ways to tap it, I guess, that aren't attacking, but 4-4 four, four should be able to get in at least once, and um, all your 1-1s one that you've hopefully created up to that point will become 2-2s, two and that's, pretty, that's a pretty good effect. At rare, there's actually some really good stuff you can do in these colors that um, might put you in King Darien which is a 2-3 that pumps all your creatures, plus one, plus one, across the board. And there's more. Put a plus one, plus one counter on King Darien, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for five mana, and you can sacrifice it to give all your tokens hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So King Darien's great. Um, you might even splash King Darien in a white or a green deck because uh, it's pretty strong. And of course, if you open an Ajani, you're probably gonna wanna go green-white uh, a journey has been completed in Dominaria, and uh, as we saw with the Tamio, and has there been one more completed Planeswalker? Anyways, it's got the Phyrexian thing. If you pay two life instead of the mana, it enters with two fewer loyalty counters. Its plus is reveal the top of your library. If it's a creature or Planeswalker card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it on the bottom of your library. So 
play creatures, and then minus three, distribute three plus one plus one counters among up to three target creatures. They gain vigilance until end of turn. Um, play creatures, and my, the minus six, if you can emblem it, whenever you cast a creature or planeswalker spell, target opponent gets two poison counters. So play creatures. If you get a Johnny, make a deck with a lot of creatures, and uh, win. But in your regular decks that you're going to be building out of this, I think you're going to want like cheap creatures like Land of War Stalker that gets plussed every time a creature enters. Uh, of course, you've got the Nishobra Brawler that's going to help with the like more domain flavored versions of this. Uh, Resolute Reinforcements is a flash creature that makes a 1-1 white soldier creature token. So kind of like a timely reinforcements, but uh, with a body, which is nice because you can recur it and things like that. Uh, you got Charismatic Vanguard, which has got this kind of late game pump uh, for all you creatures. You might be interested in playing. If you're able to kick it, Bog Badger is actually pretty good. Um, give your whole board menace, so all your big token board that you made, you can come down and uh, get a big attack with it. Also, weirdly, Bog Badger is the cheapest creature that doesn't die to that, uh, is it cast down, the, the one mana black spell that kills creatures with power and toughness five or less total um so yeah bog badger maybe a sneaky good card because <laughs> it doesn't die to one of the the best removals in the set um remains to be seen death bloom gardener any of these domain decks where you're going to be splashing you might want a death bloom gardener and of course uh because it has death touch the like bite effects are good with it uh, you got Argivian Phalanx, which is the white version of that uh, cycle I talked about. It's going to get less to cast for each creature you control. Love Song of Night and Day uh, is the Saga. That's probably mostly for this deck. Probably almost always going to skip Chapter 1, which is you and target opponent each draw two cards. Hard to think of a time in Limited where you would want to do that. I guess if you're just like plan to win before they can cast all their cards. Um, but you need to refill your hand or something. But chapter two, you can jump in with that, create a one-one white bird creature token, and then in chapter three, put a plus one plus one counter of each of up to two target creatures. So you're gonna get three power, uh, maybe two of it flying over the course of two turns, which is not bad. Weather seed treaty is another one. It's the green uncommon saga. Again, you can search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, which can help with your domain. Um, but you can't use it. It's not a card with a basic land type, so it's not going to be able to fetch up the duels, which is too bad. But you can also make a token with it, and then you have a domain ability. Target creature you control gets plus X plus X and gains trample, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. And we've seen that on, you know, these pump effects on sagas be pretty good in the past. Uh, heroic charge we talked about but again if you're just going wide with tokens is a great thing and um, you might be able because you're in green you might be able to do the red kicker um, would love to get broby's thought on captain's call if he comes back uh, when we discuss captain's call um, there's definitely been some debate over whether it's one of the better commons uh, three one one white soldier creature tokens or four mana doesn't seem like the best rate, but it does create a lot of tokens, so depending on your synergies, that could be pretty strong. I think this is probably the best deck for it. Um, you got cards like Griffin Protector. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, so that's like a plus three, plus three to your Griffin Protector. Not a big fan of Griffin Protector because it dies to the cast down, but what you going to do? Black-white, your classic aristocrats or creature sacrifice format uh, archetype here 3 1 uh, banali sleeper if you pay three mana so one a white and a black then you get to uh, sacrifice a creature when it enters it's that kind of that usually just a black creature that does this but it's a, also just a two mana three one for your white decks which is pretty aggro and good with the enlist mechanic which we talked about <laughs> we got Phyrexian Warhorse, which is a 3-3 with a kicker of a white. And if you pay the kicker, you get a white soldier with it. And it is also a one-mana sacrifice outlet. It can pump itself plus two, plus one. So 
something to do with all those 1-1 white soldiers to just get in with a big horse. Phyrexian Missionary at Uncommon is the 2-3 lifelink. And if you kick it, you can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty strong. And Shieldred's Restoration, another bring a creature back. We got return creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If the spell was kicked, you gain life equal to that card's mana value. Otherwise, you lose that much life. But there is some, like, you know, life gain tacked on in black and white here. So um, if any deck can afford to pay for the life, it's probably this one. Uh, for the signposts, we got a 2 2 Death Touch in Elus Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim. And it's a Phyrexian Core Cleric. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Pretty standard, the black white kind of ping down effect. Um, just if you can sit out there and just be making creatures and sacrificing them and removing your opponent's creatures and stuff. It can really wear people down, and I think that's kind of what this deck is going to do. Maybe you're going to hit in pretty early and then just sit back and try to get people those last damage through a couple different ways. Um, we've got Aaron Benalia's Ruin, which is a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Menace. And for a white, a black, and tap, sacrifice another creature, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on each creature you control. So that's, if you're going wide, Aaron is your guy. Um, he can pump up all your soldiers. And then in the rare slot, we have a zombie build around. 3-3 three, three Vigilance Ward. Zombies you control have Vigilance. And whenever another legendary creature you control dies, so it's kind of also a legendary build around it. Yeah, you create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Um, pretty decent uh, card. We'll talk more about the legendary build around and whether that's kind of a deck of uh, rainbow legends in the hidden archetype section but continuing to talk about what this deck looks like with your commons and uncommons kind of similar to all these white token decks you're going to want resolute reinforcements and Argivian cavalier which is like two bodies for uh, one card captain's call three bodies for one card cult conscript is a creature that you can sacrifice and keep bringing back Splatter Goblin is a creature you don't mind dying. Phyrexian Vivisector is going to give you scries when stuff dies. There's also this Gibbering Barricade, which is like a wall, a nightmare wall, <laughs> that is a sack outlet that lets you gain a life and draw a card. So that can like cash in these creatures. And it can also just kind of wall people down if you want to play the more controlling, um, grindy version of this deck. I think Gibbering Barricade is something to consider, and it is common. Uh, Shieldred's Restoration we talked about. Bone Splinters is probably at its best in this deck. Um, you're going to have creatures to sacrifice, and you're going to want to sacrifice them, and you're going to destroy your opponent's creatures, and you're going to do it all for a mana. Um, Braid's Frightful Return. Again, all these sagas in this set have read ahead. So if you want to do Chapter 1, you can sacrifice a creature, and if you do, each opponent is going to discard a card. And if you want to do Chapter 2, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And chapter three, target opponent may sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent. If they don't, they lose two life and you draw a card. So most of the time it's going to be like a three mana, raise dead. They lose two life, you draw a card. That seems pretty decent value. And you may even <clears throat> be able to make them uh, sacrifice a creature. Um, Banali Sleeper we talked about, one of the kicker cards, and then... The, uh, the discount cycle of creatures, giant creatures here for black is a 5-5 five five with death touch. It's one less for each creature card in your graveyard. So you have some reanimator stuff in these colors. So you can, if you can get it into your graveyard, you can bring it back uh, with that for cheap. Or you can try and like get the board really wide with creatures and bring it back. Uh, wide with creatures, sacrifice them all, and then cast the writhing necromass. Okay, this is my pick for the best deck in the format. Um, I think all the blue-based tempo decks are going to be really strong, but I think blue-red spells is really super where it's at. Um, timely Interference, one-mana instant, kick it for an additional two. 
Creature gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. If the spell was kicked that, kicked, that creature blocks this turn if able. Like, okay, whatever. It's just an instant that cantrips, because then you draw a card. So, so, you know, maybe win a combat with it, first of all, for one mana, if you can use it skillfully enough. But if not, you're just, you know, playing an instant and drawing a card, which is what you're going to want. Maybe we'll skip ahead to Balmore Battle Mage Captain, which is um, the legendary that's going to be maybe perhaps the mythic uncommon of the set. It's a 1-3 flyer, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain trample. Um, I know I'm going to be drafting the heck out of this card. I think it's going to be fun to do Spell Slinger, lots of little flyers and evasive stuff, and give them all trample. <clears throat> and just smack in. Um, <coughs> we got the Gitu Amplifier. It's a 1-2. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. And if you can kick it, it's also going to bounce a creature back to an opponent's hand, which is just awesome. So great as a 2-drop, great as a 5-drop. Um, I, I love it. Um, Battlewing Mystic is a 2-1 with a kicker of a red. Flies and it enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, you can discard your hand and draw two cards. So again, great in the early game, or then kick it in the late game and refill your hand. Try to get a little more action, get a few more instants. This is a deck where you probably don't want to run 18 lands, I'd say. Um, Fires of Victory is really interesting. I would love to hear Broby's opinion on this card. It's two mana instant, so it's like red removal. It deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of cards in your hand. So it's like actually better earlier in the game. So it's like not the super best top deck, but I guess if you top deck it and you have five mana, then you get to draw a card. So it's at least like you deal one damage, draw a card for five mana. We'll see. It's, it's kind of got a low low floor, but the ceiling is is de decent. And then you're going to want cheap enough instants that maybe you'll just play it anyway, whether or not it's uh, it's good. Um, if you do manage to get up to five mana in a game with this deck, you can play Najal, the Storm Runner, which lets you cast sorcery spells as though they had flash, which can be nice for some combat tricks with your Balmor and other things. And uh, when it attacks, you can pay two. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery, you copy it and you can choose new targets for the copy which is nice, but of course, um, it's not Magecraft, right? Balmore is not going to trigger off the copies. You just get the original. In terms of the rares in these colors, there's like a Joyra artifact built around, which you probably shouldn't play. And there's this Temporal Firestorm, which is, this is a board wipe. You're probably going to play it whether or not you're in these colors. But if you are, and you have enough mana to kick, um, you can save some of your creatures when you do. I think Jeskai Control has been pretty good in um, recent standards. So I think you could build a Jeskai Control deck also. But I, I just like the spells aggro build of this. To Wit, you got Impulse has been reprinted, which is another, you know, play a spell, draw a card. So, you know, sift for four deep for a card. Haunting Figment we talked about, which is a 2-1, which is going to be unblockable a lot in this deck if you build it right. You got Furious Bellow, which is going to make combat really difficult, because it's going to... It's also going to help you scry to get more action. Um, Twin Inferno, similarly, you're going to get Double Strike or copy your instants or sorceries. Electrostatic Infantry is going to be a super high pick at Uncommon. It's a 1-2 Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Electrostatic Infantry. That's going to be great in this deck. Um, this deck could even run Thrill of Possibility, which just lets you, you know, discard your lands and draw some more cards, get some more action. Flowstone Infusion, which can either be a pump spell or a removal spell, very flexible. Lightning Strike, of course, is just going to be the, the mythic common of the set. Um, Gitu Amplifier, we talked about and come down and bounce. Um, Phyrexian Espionage. So if you are splashing, you can play it, but I don't think you need to splash with this deck, right? You just want to play sorceries and instants that are drawing you cards also. And um, this is just, uh, what's it called? Divination, you know? Three mana, draw two cards. But if you manage to kick it, each opponent discards a card. But you don't need to use that mode in this deck. 
<coughs> um, Talarian Terror is going to cost one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. That's a 5-5 five, five with Ward 2, which is a pretty pretty solid body threat for the, the late game if you want to finish her. And also Jin of the Fountain, which we mentioned, which is a 4-4 four, four that gets very hard to remove if your hand is stacked with instants. And 4-4 four, four flying in the air is going to be no joke in this format. Black green domain matters uh, or domain mid range. Um, kind of have a vision of what this deck should be. We talked about the bog badger, which is actually maybe going to be a bit underrated as a three three for three. Um, Urborg repossession is going to return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and you gain two life. So again, just kind of a grindy raise dead. If you kick it, you can return another target permanent card from your graveyard your hand so that's the double return card my brother was talking about in terms of like trying to loop things um tear asunder exile an artifact or enchantment if it was kicked you exile a non-land permanent instead so it's it's green's four mana remove anything but you need black to do it um choking miasma also kind of a board wipe it's gonna hopefully get rid of a lot of these tokens that are gonna be running around everywhere so all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. If you kick it, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. So maybe save one of your creatures too. Um, Bortuk Bone Rattle I love here as one of the signpost legendaries. Um, we talked about this a bit, but it's six mana for a four, four. When you cast it, you're going to get to put a creature back onto the battlefield. Um, if it's small enough to fit within your domain requirements, but if not, it's going to back to your hand. So pretty good and we've got erg spawn of turg which is like a weird um kind of land build around i don't know um, maybe somebody's going to figure out a cool deck to do this with but um when i was looking at the card pool i was having trouble figuring out the thing about erg spawn of turg <laughs> is uh it has five toughness which is pretty serious and it's just going to grow as lands go into your graveyard. So if you have ways to like discard stuff for value or things, maybe maybe it's um, something. I don't know. It does have that cool Dark Heart of the Woods ability to sacrifice a land, gain two life. Or I guess Zurin Orb. Um, yeah, and Dark Heart of the Woods. Those are some classic throwbacks. Look them up, you boomer, you zoomers. Look up those boomer cards. Um couple of three rares that you can play with these colors. The main one I want to call out here is Namada Primeval Warden. The 3-4 reach, if a creature an opponent controls would die, you exile it. And when you do, you create a sapperling. And then you can sacrifice your sapperling to pump it, plus two, plus two, or sacrifice two sapperlings to draw a card. Um, again, just kind of a grindy plan. Gum up the board, sacrifice your stuff, draw cards, and uh, somehow win. Probably with a big creature. Let's look at what we've got here. We've got creatures like Conscript that can come back. We've got Eerie Soul Tender, which is a 3-1 that when it enters it mills. And then, so that can put lands in your graveyard. And then you can pay 5 mana to exile it from your graveyard and return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, doing that classic Golgari graveyard shenanigan stuff. Um, Snare Spinner and Magna Goth Sentry, I kind of talked about these, the decks that are more mid-rangey or want to get to the late game. Maybe probably want to be able to block the small flyers. Uh, Weather Seed Treaty makes Sapperlings, or a Sapperling. Um, because you're in green, you might be able to kick your Elvish Hydromancers, for example, with some of your better kicker cards. Um, you can play the Writhing Necromass, or you can play the Moss Beard Ancient I definitely think a 7-7 seven, seven Trample will be helpful for closing out the game with your domain mid-range deck. Red-White, Tokens Aggro. This is another Broby Classic here. Heroic Charge we talked about. Make a bunch of tokens. Give them all plus two, plus one. Maybe kick it and give them all Trample as well. Keldon Strike Team, which is a three mana, three one. But if you can kick it for another two, you get two plus two. 1-1 one, one, White Soldier Creature Tokens, and as long as Keldon Strike Team entered the battlefield this turn, the creatures you control have haste, so you're getting 5-3 of hasty power onto the board. Um, could be a finisher kind of out of nowhere. You can get your opponent to 
attack you and tap and go defenseless. Um, cleaving Skyrider is a uh, 2 2 flying flash, which is good on its own, but if you can kick it, then it can deal damage equal to the number of attacking creatures, so it kind of wants you to have a big attack. Hurlun Battle Helm. Hip. Battle him uh, f deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker. If you can kick it, you gain four life. So red white is definitely where you want to be with that card. It's going to swing a lot of games. Let's look at Baird. I'll give you the recruiter, legendary creature, human soldier. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power greater than its base power, create a one-one white soldier creature token. So shouldn't be that hard. You know, cast a Keldon Strike team and start pooping out 1-1 one, one white soldiers. I didn't look at which um, one mana cards you could get down before Baird. I don't know if there are any in the format. But uh, definitely by turn three, Baird could start just creating a token a turn. And in the right um, format, that can just lead to a win. Uh, we also have Tori Davenant, Fury Rider. Um... I think it was Tori the Avenant something. There's a Davenant Archer, right? It's a classic card. Anyways, it's a 3-3 Vigilance Trample for four. Good stats. And when it attacks, all other attacking creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Red attacking creatures also get Trample. And white attacking creatures untap. So they get Pseudo Vigilance. We've got Aster, Bearer of Blades at rare, which is like a equipment vehicle build around. There's really not... There's zero vehicles at um, rare, at, uh, sorry, at common or uncommon, and there's like two equipments, so it seems kind of like a, uh... oh, are you the back bro? Um, seems like a kind of a constructed plant. On the other hand, it is just a 4-4 four, four for four, so you might still just play it. But I don't think it's going to be a high pick. Uh, Angel of Wrath, on the other hand, is an awesome pick. It has a kicker for either a red or a black. It's a 3-4 flying lifelink. So you can just play it in any white deck. But if you kick it, it deals 2 damage to any target. Remember, that's lifelink damage. Uh, and if it was kicked twice, it deals 2 damage to any target. So potentially an uh, 8-point life swing when it comes down, if you can get the red and the black going with it. Pretty sweet. In terms of what this deck is playing, like a lot of these white decks, I think you're going to want these things that make multiple bodies with one card. Um, you can play the Electrostatic Infantry here, or you can play a lot of these Enlist creatures. Enlist seems to be centered in white, uh, red, with the red creatures being the better Enlist creatures, uh, at least at common and uncommon in my opinion. I like this Balduvian Berserker, because when it dies, it's going to deal damage equal to its power. And I like the Coalition Warbrute which is a 3-4 trample, and you're using your creatures as pump spells, essentially, on a 3-4 trample body to begin with. It's going to be pretty strong. Uh, Furious Bellow. We talked about this Join Forces, whether that's going to be good or not. I think for finishers, I kind of like Hurler Cyclops. If you've made a big wide board and you can bring that down and pay a bunch, sacrifice all your 1-1s and just throw them at your opponent's face, for the last couple points of damage, that could be a win condition. You've also got the Dragon Whelp, which can be, I think, a win condition in these decks. If before they can kind of get set up in the air, you can be smacking in. And then uh, if you're, it's unblocked and you got a bunch of red mana, you can pump it more than it needs to, uh, to die, right? If you activate it four or more times, you have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the end step. But you won't be around to do that if you uh, connect with a big hit with it. Um, Keldon Strike Team, uh, we talked about that. It's a 3-1. If you can kick it, you get some soldiers with it. That could be a finisher in the right board state. But of course, I think Heroic Charge is going to be really what you want to do. Just make a bunch of 1-1s and then at some point Heroic Charge and you know hit them for 12. Uh, Blue-Green Kicker Ramp. This was a tricky one to figure out what exactly this is doing. Um, the kicker cards are very good. You've got Vine Shaper Prodigy, which is a 2-2, two -two, kicks for two. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. So it's a 2-2 two -two that draws you a card for four mana, and you get some selection there. Um, 
And those those green creatures, uh, when they do those, are generally very good. Pixie Illusionist. Uh, it helps with your domain. You can kick it in the late game, so it's a 3-3 flyer, so it's more of a threat. Just a really solid common. Elvish Hydromancer is awesome. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it's kicked, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. So you do have to get up to 7 mana, but... Um, if you're trying to ramp and make big creatures and then you can come down and copy the big creatures, that seems pretty cool. Um, joint Exploration is a two mana instant speed spell. Scry two, draw a card. And if it was kicked, you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's like, you know, make your own bad growth spiral. But, you know, bad growth spiral is still pretty good. Uh, I like this Niel Avazoa Aeronaut. I think a lot of people are going to be stealing this to uh, Splash. But if you can get it in a dedicated blue-green domain deck, that could be fun. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. Put up to one of them on top of your library, the rest on the bottom in a random order. If there are five basic land types among lands you control, draw a card. Um, Tatiova is back. She's going to give land creatures you control flying, and no, there are no land creatures in the set, so you have to use her ability whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. If you control seven or more lands, up to one target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste, it's still land. But it is a payoff, right? If you just ramp to nowhere and you just keep drawing lands, you can at least, they all come in as 3-3 creatures. So, I think you'll play it. Um, I also really love this rare, which is a build around. It's a 2-1 flyer. Whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy, and of course, a copy of an aura becomes a token. So if they are plussing up their stuff or whatever, you get to um, give it to Ivy, which is cool. And, and you count as a player, so you can plus up all your other stuff, and Ivy will get the, uh, get the bonus as well. Um, we talked about Pixie Illusionist. <clears throat> Floriferous Vine Wall is a 0-2 defender that lets you look through the top six and find a land. Hopefully you'll find a land within six cards. I think most of the time you're going to hit with that. Um, the Tide Turner is a merfolk wizard that can help you cast instants and sorceries or kicked spells. So that would include like creatures that can kick. So having that little bit of extra mana for kicker. Um, could be useful. We've got Death Bloom Gardener, which uh, can help you with your splashes. You got this Tide Pool Turtle, you know, we've got five toughness. I think this creature is going to be underrated. It is four mana to get down, but it gives you something to do with all that mana you've hopefully created in the late game. You just start scrying through your deck and getting action while your opponent does nothing. Um, you got the Vota Sea Scavenger, which is a domain payoff. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top X. Where X is the number of basic land types, and you can put one on top of your library and the rest on the bottom in a random order. Just a little bit of selection with the 3-2. Not that great. Similarly, Sunbathing Root Walla. Uh, <laughs> it is a 2-2 two -two for 2, so the baseline is not bad. It's just a bear. But um, in the late game, you can pump it based on your domain for 4 mana, which is kind of meh. But with these kicker decks... It's just all about getting that kicker value, I guess. Um, it tends to, it tends to play stronger and limited than you think. Uh, Shalai's Acolyte we talked about. You can just, any of these things that have either blue or green in their kicker, you could probably consider for this deck, especially if you get enough fixing. There you go in the full domain. Talked about Weather Seed Treaty. It's kind of a little bit of a domain enabler and payoff. And uh, Talarian Geyser is another great one that you can snag and then try to kick it to gain life. But if not, still got a Talarian Geyser. And that is the two color archetypes. Let's talk about um, some of the weird fun things you can do in the set. There's this whole uh, defiler cycle. So one for each um, color. And uh, it lets you kind of pay Phyrexian mana for permanents each of them um, in the case of defiler of vigor it's a 6-6 six, six trample as an additional cost to cast a green permanent you can pay two life and those spells cost green less to cast if you paid life this way 
And uh, whenever you cast a green permanent, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Basically, you're going to draft these and play them if you get them. And uh, if monocolor is open, I think it's totally a possibility. There's also one triple pip, and of course it is in green, which is going to be probably the easiest way to cast it. This is the Silverback Elder, which is a 5-7. Whenever you cast a creature spell, uh, you can either destroy an artifact or enchantment. Look at the top five cards of your library, put a land onto the battlefield, tap from among them. Or gain four life um, total mythic bomb but maybe a little harder to cast maybe incentivizes you to go heavy into the mono color you can also do three color there's a bunch of mythics there's about five mythics I think that uh, are three color kind of build arounds you got Zur, which is like an enchanter build around you got Sulkanar which is a weird um, what's that like enchantment that counts down options and they're all good for you until the last one where you like lose the game this is kind of similar except they're all minorly good and then you give soul canar to an opponent but i think the best thing to do is just play it in a deck with a lot of sacrifice abilities so once you've gotten your value out of your five five um you just sacrifice it or blink it if you can blink it or something with blue maybe bounce it back to your hand and recast it soul of wind grace is a discard a land kind of build around Thing and and um, they said the mana bases should be good, so you can definitely splash these, especially if you're in those domain decks. If nobody wants these, these might end up going around. You got Rith, which is a dragons build around. Again, not a ton of dragons, but a five five flying ward two. Don't even have to read the rest of the card. You're gonna play that in limited. Shauna the purifying blade is a kind of a life gain build around. I talk a little bit more about what you would build in that deck here in a minute, but. Okay, so Hidden Archetypes. This is the one everybody's talking about, the Esper Defenders deck. Maybe throw green in there with the Floriferous Vine Wall. Um, this is kind of semi-official. Gavin Verhey in the video running down the archetypes talked about this. So this is a known one. He said it doesn't come together always, but when it does, it's pretty sweet. Is it going to be good? I don't know. I think aggro is going to be really strong in the format. The meta might shift to a point where the Esper Defenders deck is actually something that can combat it. The stats are not great. You have stuff like the Shield Wall Sentinel, which is a 1-3 for 4, and it's Defender. But you get to search your library for a card with Defender and put it into your hand. So that's going to be a real enabler, because what do you need to win? Um, here on the bottom, you got either the Walking Bulwark which lets you turn your walls into being able to attack with their toughness. You've got the Wing Mantle Chaplain, which is going to make 1-1 one, one white birds for each creature with defender you control when it comes down. Again, a 0-3 for 4. So imagine your opponent's like wipe the board, or it's like the first creature you're able to cast. It's going to do not a lot. But when you cast a creature with defender, you get a bird with it. Um, better, I think, is the Coral Colony, which is a 1-4... Um, and you can pay two tap and mill cards equal to the number of creatures you control with Defender. And I can see just a controlling deck having that as a win con for sure in limited. And Blight Pile, which is probably the faster way to do it, which is each opponent loses X life where X is the number of creatures with Defender you control as a tap ability. But it's a little bit more expensive. But it's also a 3 3, so it can maybe kind of block or kill stuff and be more of a threat. But, anyways. Lots of, uh, all the stuff on top is the commons, and the stuff on the bottom is the uncommons. Pretty easy to kind of feel your way through the draft and find these cards. If you see it has Defender and it's uncommon, it's one of the payoffs. And uh, This looks sweet. Yeah, hey, he's back. <laughs> I was trying to get back a couple different odds, the phone just kept ringing. So. Yeah, this one looks fun. The Blight Pile is I, I, the Blight through the Wind Con, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably your best best win con with this, although blue looks really strong to me as a color. I mean blue and black both. And I do uh -huh. love I do love a good mill deck. We'll talk about how you would build the mill deck. So um as a subset of the defenders deck question mark, I say there's a mill deck with blue where you just get coral colonies, you get shield wall sentinels to find your coral colonies. 
and you use stuff like impede momentum to just stun your opponent's creatures and you use impulse to find your stuff and then you use um founding the third path copies of that which has a chapter target player mills four cards mm. <laughs> and then like a bunch of counter spells and stuff maybe even mono blue it but of course combining a blue black kind of control build and milling people out would be kind of hilarious fun definitely that feels doable um rainbow legends there is a card called joda the unifier that costs wooberg for a five five gives legendary creatures you control plus x plus x where x is the number of legendary creatures you control um people are gonna draft this they're gonna try to build this deck so if you're gonna build this deck here's what you should try to put in it i mean first of all you got just scads of uncommon um legends but the best ones to put in i think are rada coalition warlord which is like a domain so you Gonna pay you off for five color. Zar Ojanin, a domain, pay you off for five color. Bortuk Bone Rattle, which is good anyway, but pays you off for five color. Maybe Tatiova, something like that, which is for ramping. Rulik Mons is gonna help you ramp. They're gonna be base green. You're probably gonna still try to be base green in your rainbow decks. You also wanna get like Relic of Legends, which is that mana rock that lets you tap legends for mana of any color. Um Maybe people will pass you a Radadrabic of Urborg so that when your creatures die, they'll come back. Um, or when your legendary creatures die, they'll come back, although as not legendary. But still, it's nice to have them back. Um, there's an equipment called Hero's Heirloom that if the creature it equips is legendary, it gives it Trample and Haste, which seems like extra good in this deck if like almost all your creatures are legendary. And there's also this combat research, which is, you know, if your creature is legendary, it gets plus one, plus one, and has ward one. Just a little, little tiny legendary bonus. And then uh, Soul of Wind Grace. Why did I put this in here? I guess just because um, it's a harder to play legend, you might get past, even though it's uh, mythic. Uh, you can also just play five color domain. Really, any of the... Oh. Arata is kind of out of uh, alignment. But anyways, there's all the domain um, legends that we talked about, like Nael and Zarujanin and Bortuk and Rada. There's this stuff like, there's basically a domain payoff for each color and a couple extras in green. But black has Shadow Prophecy, blue has Vodacy Scavenger, white has this kind of bad removal spell artillery blast but maybe in the domain deck it's actually secretly really good and you'll probably be able to pick it up really late and you got maria's outrider which can actually do some serious damage to face if you can get the full domain package going so domain deck will be something fun to build probably i always like to look at a voltron deck it's trying to build a big creature and then protect it um i like enlist creatures for that in this format so like the Yavamaya Steel Crusher or the Banalish Faith Bonder, like a cheap enlist creature that comes down early and then you can start tapping your bigger creatures to pump it up. Um, Hexbane Tortoise is also not bad. It's enlist and it has Ward 2, so it gives itself a little bit of protection. Um, the 2-2 Menace Knight would be good. The Pixie Illusionist, like a Flyer. The Balmor Battle Mage Captain would be a great one to do. Uh, and then you protect the creature with negate, shore up, battle rage blessing, take up the shield, and you can pop combat research or hero's heirloom on it to give it bonuses and have it draw cards when it hits in. Kind of a fun, fun thing. Um, there are these lord for each color gets a lord of like a classic tribe and magic. For green, it's elves, and. What we have to look at is not all of these are really very well supported in Limited. Elves is one of the better ones. You've got Lana Warstalker at Common. You've got Queen Alanal at Uncommon. You have my Iconoclast at Uncommon. Maria's Outrider uh, at Common. Rata Coalition Warlord. Nael Evazoa Aeronaut. Uncommon. You got another Common with Vine Shaper Prodigy. You got Elvish Hydromancer. So you got you got elves, mostly based out of green. 
If you're going to pick a second color, I'd probably pick red based on this. But you could also do it green, blue, green, white. Or because you're green, you can domain it up and splash into other colors. Is it worth it to give all your elves plus one plus one and then whenever you cast an elf, pay green and draw a card? I think so, if you can really get there. Whereas, like, the merfolk, you're playing on hard mode because you got two commons and two uncommons and, like, one rare, which you're probably not going to see in the same draft as you get if you draft the Vidalian Hexcatcher. So merfolk is going to be one that's really hard. And then... Uh, and then Similarly, goblins in red is going to be really hard to put together. There's just not, there's like, you know, two common goblins and two uncommon goblins. And you're talking about a three color deck. Really hard. Soldiers is going to be the easiest one. That's the white build around here. First of all, it's a 2-2 two -two for two. So even if you don't manage to make, and you're going to make other soldiers in white without trying because there's tons of soldier tokens running around but even if not you have that and you have its ability where it exiles from a graveyard so plus one plus one counter but you can definitely make okay so now i got you back we got this captain's call card do you see that four mana sorcery create three one one white soldier creature tokens yeah you were one of the people who was on to that card in kamigawa that's like make a bunch of two twos and scry for six, six for six yeah. mana and you yeah, you cool. spotted that right away as a good card. So what's your take on Captain's Call? Well, it's probably like synergistically good in that, that blue white deck. It doesn't really matter that it costs more. Uh it doesn't matter that you're getting three three stats for four. Well, yeah, because you're, you're making three more. bodies and you're but getting you also a spell. want it, you want to play it later. Yeah. Yeah. So if it would be too powerful at three mana, but like I don't know, it's like not busted. It's like probably decent. I mean, if, if you can get the Valiant right. Veteran, it's going to be pretty good. That's four mana, yeah. make six six yeah. power. Yeah. Um, Shadow Right Priest Black did not get zombies; they got clerics. And uh, it kind of has a cool ability where you can sacrifice another cleric, search your library for a black creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. You're kind of limited of black creatures you would want to do that with. <laughs> you can get um, Sanger Connoisseur, which is a 3-3 flyer. And then when creatures die, it gets plus one counters. Or you can get the Writhing Necromass, which is a 5-5 death touch. But in terms of like common uncommon, your payoffs for what, the, what you're sacrificing your cleric to get is not great in limited. However, like you have a decent amount of clerics um, to get, and yes. and your signpost Illus Elcor is a cleric, so you're going to be doing the black white thing anyway. And you just kind of go heavier on cleric synergies. Um, there's a bunch of these rares that seem to point to artifacts matter archetypes but i just think the artifacts are so weak you got joyra ageless innovator aster bearer of blades miria scholar of antiquity we didn't really talk about yosha declares war which is a saga comes down makes a ornithopter then chapter two tap any number of untapped artifacts you control it deals damage that much damage to target creature or planeswalker so you're going to get one damage from your Ornithopter most of the time? I don't know. And then your Ornithopter can, for a turn, um, become a 4-4, which is cool. Or you can read ahead and try to like make one of these other artifacts a 4-4. It just seems like it's going to be hard. I mean... Maybe nobody's going to be drafting the artifacts, so it's just something to do if you end up being in the seat that just gets past a lot of the artifacts. Um, Shanna Purifying Blade, you can build a Bant Life Gain deck around. I just wanted to see what was available in terms of Life Gain in those colors if you, if you drafted Shanna. 
a lot in white. You got Mesa Cavalier, Knight of Dawn's Light, which actually is just more of a life gain payoff because it uh, gives you an extra life whenever you gain life. Uh, Samite Herbalist, take up the shield, can give something lifelink and indestructible. Phyrexian Missionary has lifelink. And then green, uh, you're going to get your Moss Beard Ancient, you get five life. I don't think you'll have five mana to pay to draw cards after you cast it, but maybe you'll have one mana or two mana. Um, Talarian Geyser seems like one of the cooler things you can do, right? Bounce something, draw a card, gain three life, and then maybe draw more cards. Um, Zer, there's just, there's like two non-aura enchantments that you can do with Zer in the format. I think they're good, they're good enchantments too, so people are going to be drafting them highly. I don't think... I don't think you're going to get to do the Zur thing. It's going to disappoint people. I think it's there to be a commander. Enchantment creatures? Yeah. There's no enchantment creatures in, in Dominary United. Of course, there's a, there are a bunch in Kamigawa. Right. But yeah. Weird. For one and a white target non or enchantment you control becomes a creature in addition to its other types. Has base power and toughness, each equal to its mana value. And then Zur is going to give it Death Touch, Life Link, and Hexproof. So you can imagine if you can get a prayer of binding and turn it into a 4-4 death touch lifelink hexproof, that's pretty good. And Xur is just a 1-4 flying for 3, but it's like 3 mana that's hard to, you know, 3, three colored pips, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. I thought you might appreciate this, I did something new for the set. I. I went and I um, figured out where the toughness breaks are in terms of how strong the creatures are. So when we talk about removal, we'll kind of have a sense of like how powerful the removal is. So at one toughness, you only have 16 common or uncommon creatures. So stuff that deals one damage or removes one toughness, not great. Once you get to two toughness, you're adding 28 more creatures. So that's quite a bit. Three toughness and an additional 31 creatures. So three toughness is really a sweet spot there between three and four. 16 creatures have four toughness. Eight creatures have five toughness, which is actually quite a few creatures having that much toughness. And then six plus just two creatures. This is only common and uncommon, of course. A lot of the rares have higher toughness. But what's interesting, so like Coral Colony is your biggest toughness at two mana with four toughness so that to me suggests coral colony will actually be maybe better than people think when we're talking about that mill deck uh -huh. and then a lot of the walls are just like low toughness too but like kind of that lets you know that it's okay yeah it's on the spot and then um moss beard ancient is your biggest creature here seven toughness i think including rares and mythics you're not going to get bigger than seven Colorless removal, I even hate to play it or to put it on here. Meteorite. You've seen this card before, right? It's uh, a yeah. five mana mana rock. When it comes down, it deals two damage to any target. Yeah. Okay. But we saw, you know, not quite half of the creatures in the format can be killed by a meteorite. Still, I don't think it's where you want to be. Uh, white has this Artillery Blast, which is probably going to deal two damage to a tapped creature, two or three damage to a tapped creature, or two. Not that great. Um, Destroy Evil, which I like better, because it's going to kill the big creatures for white. Also be able to take out enchantments, which, you know, there is, as you can see, white has some enchantment-based removal. you got Citizen's Arrest, which is going to be a premium white Removal a common and prayer binding, which is going to be your premium white removal uncommon. And then there's some kicker cards in white that can also be used as removal. You got runic shot, which destroys a tap creature, um, stall for time. I'm putting it as removal, it's just it stuns creatures uh, or taps them. And then uh, cleaving sky rider, if you can kick it, can deal damage. Um, if you're just counting raw numbers, the white actually has quite a bit of removal in the set compared to other colors. Um, blue 
has uh, two mana sorcery that can stun a creature, which we'll see. Being able to have a creature tap down for three turns is a pretty good tempo. Um, and then Talarian Geyser and Rona's Vortex, we talked about. Those are going to be fought over. People are going to be splashing to uh, cast those with Kicker, I think. Black does not actually have a lot of removal in this set, which is crazy. Uh, you got Bone Splinters at common. Cut down. I did the math. Kills about 70% of creatures in the format. It's like 71 or 72 out of 104 creatures. <clears throat> of course, you're not counting all the tokens and things that you make. Um, Tribute to Urborg, which you'll just run in any black deck. Whether you're not, you can kick it because it's minus two, minus two instant speed. And then um, Extinguish the Light, which is black's four mana instant speed. Kill anything. And then if it's, it was small enough, you're also going to gain three life. Pretty good removal considering there's not a lot of it. Um, there are a bunch of creatures with Death Touch in black. Now red. Red is your main removal color in this set, and that's one of the reasons I think blue is really good with the tempo, and red is good with the tempo, and is going to give you some of the best removal. You got Flowstone Infusion for one mana. It's going to pick off all those two toughness creatures, or be used as a pump spell if you need that last extra two points of damage. Um, Lightning Strike kills 75% of creatures in the format. Uh, Lightning Strike, yeah, is uh, first pickable common, I think. It can also go face, so it can also be that last three points of damage you need to win. Hurloon Battle Hymn is fantastic too. It's going to do the four damage, so it's going to pick off even more creatures in the format. And um, if you can kick it, and I think you will try to kick it, you gain four life, so it's going to have that Lightning Helix effect too. Um, pretty fantastic. Jaya's Fire Nato is the standard red 5 damage for 5 sorcery. Kind of meh. But maybe you'll play it if you if you have to. Fires of Victory. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on this one. You still with me, Roby? Oh, maybe. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Yeah, Fires of Victory. 2 mana mm -hmm. instant. Uh, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of cards in your hand. And then if you kick it for two and a blue, so for five mana, you also get to draw a card. So you're adding a point of damage to it. Yeah. But it's like better in the early game when you have more cards in your hand. Uh huh. It's a really strange removal. And then in the late game, you can kick it. In the late game, you can kick it if you're in blue. The blue red may, might have. Decent amount of cards in hand, though, so it might be good. Maybe you think you're kind of just like saving up to storm off. Be good. We um, give your blue red spells, so like it really would fit that. Like that's what I was trying to say, I guess. Blue to the hurler cyclops, dealing one damage to any target. Pick it off. There are a lot of like two ones and stuff in the format, so in, in the right matchups, that can come down. And if you got creatures to sacrifice, you can pick off all your opponent's stuff. There's also Smash to Dust, which can deal one damage to each creature your opponent's control, which will be just a wreck certain people. I don't think most people will main deck it, but it wrecks the Defender deck because it destroys a creature with Defender, and it wrecks these decks that are making a ton of 1-1 one -one tokens. Um, <coughs> Steel Crusher just gets the bonus ability to sacrifice it to destroy an artifact. I don't, As I said, I don't think the artifact deck is very strong. Yoshi Declares War has that mode where you can tap artifacts to deal damage to a creature. And we talked about Enthrall to the Pit being used as removal if you get up to 7 mana. But really, where it's at, those first three, Flowstone Infusion kills the, the 2 toughness, Lightning Strike kills the 3 toughness, and Hurloon Battle Him, Battle Him kills the 4 toughness all at instant speed. Uh, those are your premium red removal spells. Green, you got a uh, fight with tail swipe. If you play it during your main phase, the creature gets plus one, plus one. Bite down is a bite. Instant speed, and you got broken wings because people are going to play it and wreck me with it, even though you really shouldn't main deck it. Multicolor, none because I'm not counting the kicker stuff. Combat tricks, white's got a ton of combat tricks. 
You can flash in the resolute enforcements. You can destroy evil. You can do the artillery blasts uh, as long as the creature is tapped. Take up white the shield. Is, hmm? is white good? I feel like white's good in this set. Uh, I like I like all the just guy stuff. Yeah, I I think domain. I think the domain and the like control. Well, we'll see what control does, but like the domain stuff is just a little slow. I think. I think the tempo yeah. decks look really good. We'll see. Maybe they've calibrated the format so the tempo decks can't always just win, but I kind of feel like they haven't. I kind of feel like red, blue, and and blue, white are gonna just dominate. Mm -hmm. Maybe white red also. Uh, blue has some good combat tricks. We talked about Rona's vortex, shore up, timely interference, protect the negotiators. You can kick it and make a soldier. So I kind of count it as a combat trick. I don't know. You'd have to like have a spell you want to counter to use it that way. But um, and then Talarian Geyser uh, is a sorcery, so that shouldn't be on this here. <laughs> but anyways, uh, black cut down which is that fantastic removal spell. It can also be a combat trick. They double block, you cut down one of their creatures, they lose both. They have two for one. Um, Battle Rage Blessing. Similarly, if they double block against that, that's just a total blowout. Tribute to Urborg. Instant speed and extinguish light instant speed. Black's removal is like instant speed and very good. And also works as combat tricks. Red, we talked about Flowstone Infusion can be a combat trick. Either direction, pumping the toughness or reducing the toughness or pumping the power. Uh, Twin Inferno, given the double strike. Furious Bellow, you like these kind of effects, right? The plus three, plus zero first strike. Yeah. Pumps for two mana. Yeah. Lightning Strike, of course, is going to be really good. You're just not going to know what to do when your opponent has red in attack and they have two mana up. They've just got a lot of... Stuff they could be doing to you. Um, Warhost's Frenzy can really wreck you. They give all their whole board plus two plus zero, and then they get to draw cards when their stuff dies. And the Battle Hymn, of course, talked about. Uh, green has Gaia's Might, which gives a creature plus one plus one for each basic land type among lands you control. So it could be as high as a plus five plus five for one mana. A magical Christmas land. Um, Tail Swipe is instant. Strength of the Coalition is another pump spell that's instant and can also like kick and give um, the whole board plus one plus one counters, which is kind of could be a real wreck you. Bite down, bite spell, Colossal Growth plus three plus three. If it was kicked, it gets plus four plus four and trample. Um, Terra Sunders, Enchantment Artifact removal, but if you can get black in there, it exiles. Any non-land permanent from four mana, which is pretty great. The broken wings, not great. For colorless, uh, my top commons are the tangled islet and the wooded ridgeline because they're green. Um, they're basically in the domain colors, but maybe the domain decks really want the off-color uh, tap lands. I don't know. But anyways, I think. Essentially, your your colorless commons that you're going to want to pick are these lands. I could definitely see a draft starting out and just draft a bunch of lands and see what's open. Because the kicker cards are pretty good, as we saw. <laughs> and then the salvage mana worker will help you get your off-color kickers. Uh, my top commons, my picks for white. Citizen's Arrest. White's best removal spell. I like this 2-2 two -two that makes a 1-1. One -one. You could also pick the... No, I think the 1-1 one -one is an uncommon. That makes a 1-1. One -one. But it's a 2-2 two -two enlist. And so it's two bodies for one. And then stall for time. Um, I just like these tempo plays, right? Three mana, tap down their stuff, draw a card. You're the one who taught me how good those can be. Mm -hmm. Blue is really stacked. I had a hard time picking, you know, which of the blue cards are the best... A common Talarian Geyser. I, I do like these kicker ones. Talarian Geyser. Uh, return the creature. Draw a card. Gain three life. If you have white. Pixie Illusionist. We talked about how flexible that card is. That's going to be another one that you're going to have to fight to pick up. 
probably. And then Talus Lookout um, LSV seemed pretty high on this on Twitter. Let's see what you think yeah, of it. It's a 3-2 flyer. If, when it dies, you get to look at the top two cards of your library and put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, it dies to the one mana black removal spell, but I guess you get a card back that? if it does. It was like that four... Like, there's been some forecasting cost green creatures that have that, like, die and draw a card ability. Yeah. That feels better. That feels better than die and draw a card. So, and then it's, like, at stat for what it should be. Four, four mana for a 3 2 flyer as well. Um, so. Phyrexian Rager. 2 2 draws you a card, you lose a life. This, this kind of creature is always good. Um, I'm picking that as one of your yeah. black commons that you'll like to get. Then, of course, the removal, Extinguish the Light and Tribute to Urborg. Your premium common removals for black. Um, my top common picks for red. You got the removals with the Flowstone Infusion and the Lightning Strike. And then I really like this Gitu Amplifier. The one, two that pumps with instants and sorceries. And if you can manage to kick it, it's going to throw a creature back to your opponent's hand. So you get that tempo yeah. uh, advantage, too. So... I think that's just a really strong card, and that's common. Green has the Vine Shaper Prodigy we talked about. Um, two two, draw a card with some selection. You can get if you can kick it. Um, Floriferous Vine Wall. I I thought about putting the four four Reach kind of vanilla. I guess it's not vanilla. French vanilla, the four four Reach creature because I do think that that has good stats for its cost but i also like you know if you're going to be doing the domain thing being able to dig uh, it's like an o2 that draws you a card essentially and the card is always a land i think it's it's floriferous vine wall has the potential to be quite good and then of course bite down which is your green removal In terms of cards i don't think you should really play artillery blast seems like pretty hard to get to a good point where it's worthwhile with the domain um that kind of removal is always just so bad to begin with sunbathing root wall is similar i mean you can play both those cards it's not like you never play those whereas like joda's codex five mana artifact comes down does nothing then you can pay five and tap draw a card or it costs one less to activate for each basic land type and amount lands you control i guess in the control deck you maybe you get away with you know, tapping out five mana for a turn and then just being able to draw cards for the rest of the game. We talked about how poorly supported the the Goblin and the Merfolk Lords were. Not that you can't yeah. play them, but just that they just don't seem that great for limited. Um, there's this rare saga called Urza Assembles the Titans, which is all about Planeswalkers. So, you know, if you open Planeswalkers, you open that Ajani and you get this, great. Good, good for you. Um, <coughs> Academy Lore Master just seems like a constructed plan. It's a 2-3 that has each player draw cards, extra cards. But if you do, the spells you cast cost two more. Uh, I just didn't really see how that fit into the limited strategies. Not that you can't play it. Uh, Joyra, there's just not a ton of artifacts to play with Joyra. You're not getting going to cheat in anything really amazing. This is a 2-3 for 2. And a legendary creature, if you need legendaries. Um, Karn the Living Legacy. It's a 4-mana Planeswalker. Its plus is create a tapped Power Stone token, which is an artifact that adds colorless, and the mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell. You can use it for abilities and things, but the fact that it comes into play tapped is, just seems like an insult. And then uh, minus pay any amount of mana. So you got to pay mana in addition to minusing it. Look at that many cards from the top of your library. Put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom. And then if you can get it up to emblem, tap and untap artifact you control. It deals one damage to any target. As we talked about, there's a bunch of stuff that seems to be like artifact-based stuff that's a plant for the next set, the Brothers War. Which is going to be an artifact-based set, most undoubtedly. Um, but Brothers there's just not a lot. War. Yeah, the Brothers War, Miz Urza and Mishra. Mm -hmm. They're gonna uh, they're gonna go back into like the history of magic. Or, uh, there's probably gonna be time travel. Who knows? 
they got, we haven't seen an Urza Mish, Mishra's decks. Do you remember like the old Urza Mishra cards? Oh, for sure. There's like a whole backstory with them and their war and all this stuff. Because they discovered ancient technology and like unlocked magic. It's cool. It's They're cool lore. Like from the nineties? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Well there was like a novel written about it, I think, in the nineties. Yeah. I wish man, I wish I could like knew more about like some of the sets, like the stories were like There's tons mm -hmm. of YouTube videos. <laughs> if you really want to get okay. into the lore, like okay. people Maybe. really go into it. I just read a little bit to kinda like get up on what what's it all about i just like playing the cards i kind of like that there's lore there but i don't have to know it to enjoy mm -hmm. it but anyways, kamigawa stuff was cool i thought that, that the kamigawa was stuff was great yeah right. um soul Kanar the tainted we kind of talked about this of like you can try to build around it but there's not a lot of support for it in limited uh so some amount of the time you're going to play your five five your opponent's going to stall the game out, and then you're going to end up giving them the 5-5. Five five. And they get to also use it to draw cards and drain you <laughs> and deal damage. Um, so just be careful. <clears throat> the money drafts. Here we are. This is the, the last slide. Uh, what should you not be passing if you want to not pass value? Definitely take your Liliana of the Veils. Maybe not the strongest in limited, although you can definitely build around it pretty well. Um, but it is a very valuable, I think it's like a $60 card. Um, the Praetor of the set is Shieldred the Apocalypse. The 4-5 Death Touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. And whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. You just play that anyway. So first That's pick, first awesome. pick that. <laughs> Um, Timeless Lotus, I can see you passing it. If you if you're really trying to win limited, you won't pick it. But well, it um, is that cost that much money. It's it's one of the higher price cards uh, in terms of like pre order pricing. We'll see. I mean, once people play with it, maybe it, they'll decide it's not that great. What is it? It has to have some sort of constructed. Well, I mean, any any of these decks that untap things. So you can imagine like creating loops where you're untapping and, and getting infinite mana. Yeah, it costs five mana. Costs five mana to bring down, and it comes in tapped. I thought most constructed decks are just already just like humming at that point. But it's um, it's a commander thing. Like a lot of commander decks will enjoy having that. Uh, okay, I guess. You know, if your if your commander costs Wooberg, like Joe to the Unifier, over here, there's another one that um, has pretty high demand here and pre pre-release but we got uh, sarah paragon which is like the big mythic angel splashy mythic angel of the set joe to the unifier which is the big splashy five color commander but you can also play it we saw what what you would what it would take to build a joe to the unifier deck there in our hidden decks and archetypes section if you skipped ahead to look at this you can skip back and check that out uh, i love this card vesuvian duplomancy i'm sad that it's pre-selling for a lot because i would love to get some of these this is like a classic card for me. It's like a Johnny build around. Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. Except it's not legendary. That seems like a lot of fun to me. They have like cool treatments of the Planeswalkers, like this Karn. It's like the full art treatment. There's this card, Karn Silex, which is kind of better in the older formats. It's a three mana, enters the battlefield tapped. Players can't pay life to cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities, which shuts down fetch lands, which is big in like modern and legacy and stuff. Um, and then it's like a Nevin Earl's disc where you can exile it and exile non-land permanents. Uh, in terms of rares, Plaza of Heroes seems to be the rare that people want the most, at least at this point. Perhaps to add a man of any color to cast legendaries or a man of any color among legendaries you control. And then you can exile it to give a legendary creature hexproof. Shivan Devastrator is the big splashy mythic dragon slash Hydra. There's a cool Phyrexian Ajani Planeswalker treatment, and the Jaya has a full art treatment. And um, yeah, I don't think stuff is like pre ordering for a whole, whole lot. There's this other promo they're doing so in the collector boxes. Uh, Broby, they're doing this thing where they're they've 
seated um, a very small amount of the collector boxes have cards from the original Legends. They had a bunch of boxes of Legends that they opened up. And they're putting those cards, like, randomly into collector boosters. Uh-huh. And the sales are apparently through the roof on the collector boosters and not so much on the draft boosters because people want to get these Legends. Uh-huh. Everybody... What's funny is the EV, in terms of, like, the value added to the box, like, you're just better off going and just buying. <laughs> if you want some, like, Legends Commons, just go and buy them for a couple dollars each. But anyways, people are getting the collector boxes. They'll open a bunch of these cool rares and mythics, and they'll probably try and sell them. Okay. So the prices shouldn't be too high. But stuff like Liliana the Veil that, uh, that just has general demand, um, I think, will maintain its value. So thanks for watching. This is a very small channel, not a lot of subscribers, not a lot of views on the videos. If you happen to find your way here, uh, really helps the YouTube algorithm, the almighty algorithm to know that we make good stuff that you like to watch. If you hit the like or the subscribe or leave a comment, tell us which legend you're hoping to open. What's that legend? What's that legend you want to see in the legend slot in your pack? And, the Legend uh, of Bagger Vance. The Legend of Bagger Vance, maybe. That would, that would be a great misprint. You would That would be worth a lot of money if you opened that. Just Will Smith uh, being the magical... Uh, was it Robert Redford? Who was he helping in that movie? It was Matt Damon was in there. Oh, it was Matt Damon? Yeah. Needs help. <laughs> or mystical black man? Okay. It's actually um, Bagger Vance is a play on Bhagavad Gita. It's supposed to be a riff on the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, like the mystic? Like the Hindu. Like Hindu Vance, I think it's like, Hindu mythology. He, he, he was all, his, his teachings were all like mystic about like seeing the field and like, not like, just like the concentration part about it. Yeah. I never I actually seen the movie. <laughs> oh, it's a great movie. I've never seen Legend of Bagger Vance. No, oh, I've never God. seen Legend of Bagger Vance. Serious? For serious? No. It's worth a watch. It was not. It was I seen Tin the, Cup. I, well, I've seen the Happy Gilmore. That's my golf movie. Here's the deal. It was made in the, the era when they, they last were making good movies, right? And it's got Will Smith. And well, uh, and they, don't, and they don't suck in it. And yeah. it's got, what's her? Uh, Charlize Ther- Theron is in Charlize it. Charlize right? Theron's in it. So, so who else was in it? I don't know. It's, uh, the cast doesn't suck. It, and overall, it's like, oh, it's not really like a golf movie per se. It kind of is, but it isn't. All right, so if you don't want to answer which legend are you hoping to open, uh, <laughs> tell us what you think of the legend, we'll of, legend of Bagger, Bagger, Bagger Vance. Vance. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Give, leave your review of Legend of Bagger Vance in the comments. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining yeah. me and Broby here in the attic. It's late. We're punchy. Let's get this up and share it with the peoples. Yeah. And remember, magic is a game so fun, even dads like us can enjoy it. Adios. Later.